The market's near all-time highs, and the question is whether resource companies can take the lead and regain strength after being belted quite hard. The banks are also up near their highs with significant gains over the last 12 months. Is it time for them to turn back down and switch positions with those resources companies? We're also going to understand what's happening with the indices. Uh, they're so close to these highs, we're going to unpack the technical implications. Where we sit in the election cycle is also a big question. But the main one is, which companies to trade from here and what are the setups? The one guiding us through is Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, lots going on there. And it's sort of, uh, yeah, that's, it's not, not the clearest market at the moment. So, but, uh, but yeah, market's still showing you know, amazing strength there overall, even though we've got a few weak sectors. Um, some sectors are just shooting, you know, just don't know how they go down, um, which is amazing in some regards. So, uh, but no, we'll uh, start with the NASDAQ if you like, yeah. Yeah, well, um, just scrolling through in case people want to actually pause on your weekly report that you share with us. So just give them a little bit of time to pause on that screen if they need to. But the NASDAQ is where we really want you to unpack the technical aspects. As you noted, we're up near those all-time highs. You have talked about in previous weeks that full retracement. So these blue horizontal lines show the old high and then it pulled back. That was 100% at the high, 0% at the low. And then once it got back to the highs, April, March, April this year, then pushed on and extended to where it came to at the 138.2, which is a Fibonacci level. That's where it's hit, come back, <laughs> built it down quite quickly to undercut and get under the highs of last year, October, I should say two years ago, October, bounced out of that to where it is now. So you said a lot's going on. There's a lot of volatility in that. Definitely some wide ranges from the tops to the bottoms and back to where it is. So what next? Yes, I mean, it was obviously originally one of the strongest indices, but at recent times it's actually been a lot weaker there. Obviously the Dow's been the strongest, um, and then the S&P, and now the NASDAQ's probably been trailing there. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the, even the extension there um, isn't that far there, whereas I think what are we sort of sitting at um, a bit further up on the S&P, so... Look, it kind of looks more choppy to me. I sort of think it might, it might have a bit of a bounce and maybe retreat again, but maybe this thing hold, you know, I thought it might come back and retest the bottom of that channel here, but, you know, maybe we're just going to go a bit sideways for a bit here as well. So uh, I just think it looks a bit neutral to me, the, the NASDAQ, um, whereas, whereas maybe the S&P looks a bit more robust. So it's, you know, it's a hard one now. Probably, uh, to me, it looks a bit neutral, the NASDAQ, but um, the S&P, I hope it still looks pretty robust. Um, had big resistance at that key level, which, you know, that's a big level for the S&P 500 in the past. So no, no surprise to see some resistance there, but it's almost got that little cup and handle type of appearance there, Chris, there really it's sort of, it's all tightening up underneath the high here. So normally when you see that tightening price action underneath the high there, that's that's normally sort of positive or short of price action. So it's like it's sort of having a pause here consolidating under that, under that region before it goes through. So, um, yeah, now look at that. It doesn't, doesn't look that weak here. This one's just sort of consolidating there. I thought it might have come back a bit deeper, but it has done the case here. Normally, sort of September, October is probably the, you yeah, know, particularly the second half of September is normally the weakest part on the seasonal um, sort of cycle. So also election years, typically a lot of September, October um, consolidation is pulled back there. So, yeah, we thought we might have seen a bit more here, but the market's still pretty robust here. So yeah, when got the election, got the uh, the Fed meeting um, well tonight or sort of tomorrow morning for us. So that'll be interesting. Now I think that's I think this twenty five is a given. There's just whether we see something more there. I, I don't see it myself. I think people get it. You know, I think the Fed's going to be pretty conservative here. Um, but yeah, what, what that means for the market there, it's sort of pretty. Pretty widely, I think the market's pretty much pretty much got the twenty five price there. Is this whether there's any more or not? Twenty five was the price. That's what uh, we're looking at. So the Aussie will definitely get it from a secondary impact. Fed's not looking after the cash rate in Australia, but when you see the Aussie, you're talking about the S and P consolidating on the high. Well, we had an intraday high that we got belted back from quickly. What was that throughout July? But it's being able to hold closes well above the highs, the closes that we had within July. So that's telling sort of somewhat strength in the comparison. And then you've got some trend lines going on here. 
Uh, so what's your interpretation of the ASX 200 that we have now? Yeah, so I've seen clear signs of buying the dip there. Every time it's sold off, we've, we've definitely seen some volume come in and buy that. And so that's sort of positive for the market there. It's just a bit choppy here recently after a bit of a quick sell off after that sort of high there. But we've gone straight back to, to retest the high of that. And then we've sort of gone into sort of sideways move here. So I think the bigger thing there, Chris, is encouraging is that um, is the material sector, which you know, makes up quite a large part of our market. So stocks like, you know, the lithium, uranium, and iron ore, which we talked about on Friday, they've all had big declines here. So considering where the index is, yeah, it leaves us in a pretty good position there because, you know, even some of the other sectors like the banks or financials have a bit of a consolidation or pullback there. There's, there's plenty of sectors that can actually bounce there and maybe drive the index higher. So I'm probably sort of neutral to sort of positive here, really, um, just like the way it's sort of consolidating here sideways here. And I've seen those sort of clear sides of buying a dip there. So, well, I, I think it's pretty encouraging. Um, the thing that people don't understand, I mean, the thing is, I mean, look, we, we've seen... We talked about this on Friday there that, you know, like the, the lithium, iridium and iron ore sectors had big bounces last week and big volumes come in. So that was sort of a bit of a um, change of character really for those sort of, those three sort of sectors there. They, they carry a fair amount of weight on our market. Um, and then, you know, the big cap miners all had a big bounce as well last week. So, you know, across those sort of, you know, three or four areas there, there's some, you know, some, there's a lot of um, weighting in that market in those most sort of regions so you know if we can see if you know follow through there then i think the market looks you know can still sort of push on here so um the thing that's i find interesting is that like that our you know obviously you know having looked at these momentum studies the last three years we now we see sector lighted up we normally get a bit of follow through you know in most most cases some would say all cases but probably 80 90 percent of them tend to sort of follow through over the next coming months, so that's that's you know, there's good signs there. But is this just going to be you know a bit of a you know dead cat bounce, or is it going to be like a counter bounce there? That's probably what some people are probably thinking here. But if we go back and look at commodities, particularly in where inflation's typically pretty high, those moves can come back pretty hard there. And even in the past, there in the forties and seventies, when central banks thought they had inflation under control. And they started cutting rates. Inflation came very back, and we've set, we saw some really big um, rallies in some of those commodities as well. So, I, you know, I don't think we can, I don't think that we can categorically say 100 percent that inflation's dead and buried, that it won't come back. Um, so, on that basis, there, you know, I think some of those commodities could have a you know, potentially larger bounce than most people are kind of anticipating here. So. Um, that's the thing that's probably most interesting to me. Well, you're talking about the commodities having a bounce, and you've definitely witnessed that over the last couple of years, as you're saying, when you see them come on mass, they light up the launch pad, and they're really just moving together. It seems as if they're being accumulated by funds and retail investors alike, and then they can shoot the lights out and run for months and months. Before that happens, though, we want to see some sort of bottoming formation, because what we see in the launch pad is while it's building that bottom. You selected a fair few mining companies in your report this week. Yeah. We start off with Pilgrim Minerals. Most of them have taken a bath. They've been hit hard, large pullbacks. And then what you're talking about in the last week is that we saw a significant rally. So for Pilbara, I guess it's, well, it is this last candle here on the right hand side, which I can't quite see completely, but it looks like it's a bullish engulfing pattern on the weekly. Is that? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you do. You can get a get a massive. Well, you got a golfing pattern there, which obviously is reasonably impressive on its own. But with that volume being probably double the average, um, that's pretty impressive as well. Obviously, we're still looking at pretty strong buying coming in there. Um, the other thing which which is pretty interesting there, because obviously looking, I thought this might want to sort of come back and retest that old level around two dollars, which would probably be a big technical zone. But we've seen there with that first AB secrets that probably you know oftentimes with these sort of corrections there. A is often equal to C. We sort of see that, you know, this is the Elliott wave sort of thing there, but normally those waves are sort of pretty, you know, you know pretty similar, comparable in size here. So we can sort of see here that after having a bit of a bounce there, we've, we've had another little sort of correction there, like another three waves there, but you can see the size of the, of the waves are nice and consistent as well, which is sort of something we do see, um, you know, quite a lot, probably the most common correction. So good signs here that, 
the PLS has sort of probably bounced off that sort of measured model as well. So um, big volume as well, had a bit of a change of character there. So this seems to show a little bit more support here, maybe tighten up or you know, put a put a first high low in there. But I think this looks really encouraging there for the um, for this stock, but also the sector as well. Just as I say, we had so many names light up there, you know. I think I mean 16, 17 lithium names are the top 200 levers for the week here. So that, that shows you sort of widespread um, buying across the whole sector there. So that's normally a good sign there um, when we look sort of four to six weeks down the track. Well, that could coincide with what you're talking about as a bit of congestion or possibly enough time to form higher low. When we're trading mining companies on the ASX, we're also looking at sort of the broader brush. Mineral resources is quite often looked at because they've got a finger in a few different pies. So we can't go past that massive pullback. So this is the weekly chart. We can see 95 at the top of the chart and really quite a dreadful fall throughout this portion of 2024. So you've got a fair few fib lines on the chart and you've got green, you've got blue. Are they helping you sort of get a comfort for where you may see consolidation occurring on this chart? Yeah, I was sort of looking for maybe like another ABC, sort of like I you know, see the first leg measured on, but I, but I noticed that first leg down here has sort of pulled back, uh, you know, 61.8. So I thought it might, ex- might extend to maybe the 38, but it's actually gone 150% of that range, which, which can be oftentimes we look at, you know, markets will often sort of do those you know, quarter extensions or half extensions there. Um, so it is a level to sort of keep an eye on there. I thought possibly it might come back to, say, 25 if it really got overdone here. But to be honest with Chris, I was listening to a few um, analysts and a few um, broken houses there, and they were sort of, you know, a couple, couple analysts I was sort of listening to as we're talking about the just the crushing business alone being worth about $45 a share. <laughs> so putting no value on the rest of the business, which is, which is the part which is probably the iron ore and the lithium which part which is obviously getting a little bit hit there. Um, yeah, it's sort of it was pretty interesting there, sort of from a valuation point of view. Obviously, it does have a little bit of gearing. That's 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 what has sort of um, scared the market a little bit there. But the currently take a bit of corrective action there in the last week or two, and you know a bit of cost cutting as well. So that's probably going to be you know taken sort of positively. So positive step for the company anyway. Um, so I think, you know, we're now looking for probably, uh, in my opinion, I think this is a really good sign there. The volume's just you know, massive going into the low, exhaustive, and then we had a big um, you know, rally there. I think it was, you know, gone from 30 to $40 there, so that's a fair percentage move off the lows there, pretty pretty impulsive. So I think there's good signs here now. So just for me, just looking for maybe a little bit of a, I just ask when we sort of get a low, most, probably 80% of the time we get a low on mineral resources, it tends to sort of come back and, Tighten up and give it, give it a little bit of a, you know, whether that's a little tightening pattern or a BCP or something there. But um, I think if you, you know, I sort of think this might retreat back to maybe, you know, 35 $36, somewhere around that mark there. If we can hold around there nice and, you know, nice and tight, there could give us uh, more, a lower risk entry. So I think this is, you know, this is probably one of the more interesting sort of stocks in there. Um, just because I think this is kind of a high beta play, can, can bow the back pretty strong. And, I think we've just seen some good signs across the sector there. So um, it's, it's, this has often been the leader in that um, that sort of lithium um, and mining services space as well. So looks 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 very interesting to me. So just looking for a low risk low risk entry now. Well, definitely been in that lithium space, and we've seen that over the last few years. Mineral resources get carried away with that momentum trade on lithium. BHP, well. BHP is written up here, but IGO is the chart that's on screen. Just nice. Yeah. Just <laughs> no, I just noticed that's not, <laughs> well, hang on a second. That's not BHP. It's just, but, yeah. uh, so you've got A and B in here. So ABC, this doesn't look like a standard measure movement that you're talking about with the ABC, but it's sort of A equaling B, in, uh, C in size. So what's happening with IGO? They've, again, taken a massive bath, $17, coming down. Looks like they're getting south of five dollars at the lows, but uh, yeah, I think I've measured some it has to be uh, almost double. I think it was actually twice the size of that. Um, the so the, the so the C legs end up being two times the um, the A leg there, you know, in that size there. But I guess probably more important is is that longer term trend line there. I've sort of I think I had sort of gone through the bases there previously, but 
they adjusted just to go through the lows there. Now we've sort of we've come back and sort of hit that level and bounced off of there. So, um, I Joe's been sort of highlighted in the last week, or I was sort of you know a little bit surprised to me was that actually what the lowest or well, is the lowest cost producer of, of the lot. So I was, I was I presumed that PLS was actually one of the lowest there. Um, but yeah, IGO is definitely sort of one of that lower cost producer there. Obviously, uh, I know that you know, CEO has come out and said that lithium is going to maybe be a little volatile here um, this year. But um, but yeah, that obviously very just very. Um, large decline lithium price there. So you're seeing a lot of, of the supply getting turned off here. So that's probably quite good for um, for prices there in the in the medium term there. So yeah, good remember the market will always look ahead to this. So when um you know we we won't actually have to sort of see a, a low in um the in you know, lithium sort of quality price. We'll just you know if the if we're near the low we're starting to sort of you know get the worst is sort of behind us there, the market will look a bit ahead here. So Looks, again, looks like a pretty deep correction there, pretty pretty key support level. Just need to see a little bit more uh, positive signs there. But I think if this is sort of consolidate above that sort of um, that $5 region there in the next week or two there, I think that'll, that'll be pretty well placed as well. Just to expand on that for a second, the benefit of being low cost producer when the commodity prices come down is that those are on the fringe for the higher cost production and all of the commercial so that they if the commodity price stays down long enough, they'll then multiple the project, go on care and maintenance, or they'll be producing. If that continues long enough, those ones on the fringe drop out, the supply drops out, and then, as you're saying, that's beneficial in the medium term for or meaning to long term for the likes of IGO because the commodity price comes up. They've still been profitable throughout that period, but just low margins. But then as the demand ramps up, or maintains and the supply drops off, the commodity price goes up, their margins go through the roof and that's beneficial for their profitability and because those other suppliers that have turned off aren't able to come back to market quickly and turn it on like a tat, then it means IGO can maintain high margins for longer. Is that the background of the benefit of being a low-cost producer? You know, yeah, like this? yeah, you're pretty much right. And you're spot on there about when... Um... I had, I sort of had, I had, my mate used to work for sort of for Rio there years ago. And so, you know, basically they could just turn, you can turn it off overnight. Um, so basically just decide to shut it down and then, yeah, it's all, but to turn it back on again, that is a, a lengthy process. You know, the, all the off health and safety now, the planning, you know, staffing, you know, it's a, you know, it can take months, uh, to put that all back in place and, and get it going again. So, uh, yeah, and, and that's, now you're right. I mean, look, everyone wants high prices. It's obviously of everyone, but when when there is a squeeze there, then the highest cost producers they, they can't operate properly, so they get basically forced to shut down. And and, and a lot of those sort of go you know, the business. So we've seen already a few bids come in for some of those ones that are, that can't can't make it here as well. So uh, you'll see plenty of plenty of, of these sort of higher cost producers sort of go into care and maintenance because they can't make money here. Um, so some may not come back on. Um, and yeah, others might get taken out, and then but yeah, I mean it's obviously that the big guys they come under pressure like everyone else does, but they often come out the other end even stronger there because uh, you know them like maybe some mops and other assets up cheap, able to withstand that sort of lower prices there, and then when it cycle does turn in there, it will, you know, the best place to sort of recover there. So uh, you often are looking for the lowest cost producer. See, I think might have been Northern Star, might have been one of the lowest gold there. We went back two or three years ago when gold was probably languishing, and um, so when, you know when it obviously came out of the cycle there, that that was the like that was one of the leading stocks there that sort of came out of the sort of you know in the early days of the, of the positive um, gold sort of movement there. So um, yeah, the lowest cost producers often sort of uh, are the winners there in the longer haul. That's uh, well, possibly what we'll see come to be a tailwind for IGO in due course. But uh, before we get to that, we've got a few other charts in this week's report, and we do have BHP now. This looks more like a BHP chart on the weekly side of things. We've had the false break that you've talked about previously. That came up just at the end of 2023 as it climbed up, just got above the previous high that was about 12 months earlier, and it's really been uh, one-way traffic since then. Had a bit of congestion throughout the mid part of the first, second quarter of the year, and then we've continued to come back down. Fortunately, you've got a nice little box for us, which 
gives us a ray of light, a ray of hope that uh, something could be happening here. That's on the 2019-2007 high, which you've spoken about previously. So what's the update on the BHP chart this week? Yeah, it's similar there because that, that sort of uh, first leg down is sort of, you know, we sort of 50 down to 42 there. So that that sort of, you know, the A equals C again is around the same length as well. So that that's that's sort of nice to sort of see that. I thought the way we were heading last week there, Chris, we were definitely sometimes when they sort of do get into meltdown, they can overshoot here. So I thought we might have sort of shot down to maybe the um, either that 07 high or the... Um, or, or, or even the most recent low there around that sort of 36 mark. But we did sort of hold there last week. That was dividend actually, which was pretty impressive as well. So um, it has, has shown a bit of support here. And I just noticed that that level there around that sort of 3850, that is the 08 high, which is probably one of the more important highs there that um, previously it happened to be the 2011 high as well. So oftentimes those, you know, those old highs there, they can become sort of... Um, you know, sort of new lows as well. So we often sort of do see those those levels become quite important there. So it's always important to keep those levels there. But we do have a nice little measured move there and do have a pretty important old high there. We have some bounce from there. So I think the signs are pretty positive there. We just definitely saw some strength there last week in BHP. So um, I think if it sort of consolidates and holds here, I think we, we might see a nice recovery here. Nice. Well, we're going from one iron ore producer, BHP, into Fortescue Metals, which is going to be a bit more volatile than BHP, but we've come from $30 and almost cut in half. So 30, I'm going to say, it's not A equals C once again. Uh, uh, no, not quite cut in half, but pretty close to it, isn't it? So it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fairly decent move there, I guess. The two, the two things I like there is if we look at our sort of trend line from the 21, 22 lows there, we have come back to retest that 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 region there, so that's a probably a you know, fairly important sort of uh, trend line sort of support zone. What I like the most there is the volume here. So we've seen over the last probably four to six weeks, so we've seen some really big juicy volume there. If we go back to that twenty one low, we had that really aggressive sort of sell off previously. We saw that you know big volume as well in the low there. That's that's often the sort of size of accumulation taking place after a big sort of sell off like that. So. I think some good signs there. So, yeah, I think it's a big technical level. Uh, I think the volume sort of shows signs of accumulation there. So, um, yeah, it does look pretty solid here. So I think that this sort of can sort of hold that sort of 16, 1650 zone here in the next week or two there. I think, you know, likely to see a, a reasonable recovery there. The thing, you know, if you look at those sort of last couple of lows there, didn't hang around too long at the lows there. So, um, yeah, so... That's the only thing, yeah, I think, you know, oftentimes mineral resources tends to sort of build a bit more. This one here just tends to sort of, uh, once it's found its low, it tends to recover pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I'll watch this one closely here. I hope maybe we'll get some of the, you know, starting a bit more low risk there, but it is one that t- does tend to recover pretty quickly. Well, I know looking at this low here, going back a little while ago, we used, if you look at the daily chart, there's a VCP in there. And we use that as an example when we did uh, sort of play look and a description of our VCB's work and how to look for setups. That's one yep. in there. So we could be lucky that uh, it might, as you're saying, we want to see a little bit of ingestion. You want to see a bit more confirmation. Uh, who knows, maybe on the daily chart, could set up a VCP for us. But we'll come to you for those insights as it unfolds. Yeah. Now, uh, if we shift gears, still sort of in the resources side of things, but looking more at the oil gas, we've got Santos. Santos seems to be like it's conforming more to a box or a rectangle side of things and less yeah. volatile than we just saw those iron ores. So is that positive in this sort of climate? Is that a good thing? Does it give you more comfort to be able to trade it or is it um, sort of a false positive? Well, it is sort of more that sort of, uh, okay, that sort of 40, 70 style market there. We did see sort of um, big ranges throughout that period there where stocks would go up and down. And so... Definitely seen a clear range here from what six eighty to eight ten here. So um so the fact that we're sort of back down at the bottom of that range here, uh, all prices come back. Um so yeah, it just looks pretty interesting there. I think again, we saw a bit of a bounce in days last week. I think again if we sort of hold that level here in the next week or so, yeah, I think you know, it's just shown to be pretty major support here, um, sort of longer term here. So had a few flowers with it, but uh, hasn't sort of stayed under there. So yeah, I think I think 
this again looks pretty interesting here down around that sort of 680 region there looks like a you know, big big area of support just interesting with all those sort of um apart from sort of the, the lithium iron ore and uranium there we did see um some of those large cap miners that were bounced there so be, be interesting you know I, I know a few of the cycle guys have been talking about um that oil um has sort of quite a few different cycles are all sort of culminating here early september for 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 the, for the oil price there so it's pretty interesting that the oil price has sort of fallen into that sort of tie window there um so yeah it could could be a sort of important time here for a potential low there for a lot of those oil stocks so definitely sort of one to keep an eye on here um again probably just looking for some sort of tightening price action there but does look like a big big support zone there has been in the past there so um yeah i think in these sort of volatile sort of um you know periods there i think now yeah, that, that these range sort of trades have, have definitely shown some pretty strong validity so far well uh when we look at oil gas energy on the asx we also look at the woodside wds this hasn't been confined to the same sort of rectangle or range bound that we saw and you do have abc once again so i'm going to highlight this a we can see have you measured that out? Is that a similar sort of length? Is that sort of what we're hoping for? And does it coincide yeah. with this old low? Yeah, no, it's exactly right. So it's pretty pretty, pretty similar there. I think we've sort of uh, come back down to the 2016 low as well. So, um, yeah, just obviously, you know, I thought that sort of 24, 50 sort of zone there was going to be, um, yeah, so I think, I think it might have been slightly higher there, actually. I thought it was going to hold there, but did break through that sort of 27. Um, sort of zone there, uh, but you know, did break through, come back, retested when it went a bit lower here. But it, it does look like a nice sort of extension here now of of that low there. So again, probably a little early here, but gee, this one's had a fairly decent decline there, as well. So um, yeah, again, probably I think it looks oversold here. I think there's sort of nice measured movement there. Just need to show us few signs um, of um, you know. Of support here first there but yeah this you know this is another one that looks pretty interesting here as well so just gonna, gonna probably wait for a little bit more uh, confirmation there but yeah just interesting all these miners there have sort of you know, hit some pretty um big sort of technical levels had some you kind know, of reasonable size sort of measured booms as well um so they're, they're all sort of culminating at these sort of key lows all at the same time here and probably what's most important is some of those stocks is probably yeah, three quarters of the ones we've featured here today have already had pretty decent sized bounces on pretty big volume as well. So we've already seen some early signs or of buying accumulation taking place. So that's what you really want to see. Um so yeah, if we could we see the volume sort of staying elevated there. Um and you know, if we can get a you know, maybe a high low or sort of second high low sort of setting up in there, I think that'll be pretty encouraging. And so the, the thing that I sort of think the interesting Chris is that, yeah. You know, Yes, markets can get oversold and have a bounce there, but these might be sort of big opportunities than than um, than, than just like a trading bounce. Um, if if you look at those sort of commodities in the seventies, I think that remember the um, like the I think the oil price had a run there in seventy four, and it sort of cooled off again, and then it had another massive run, um, culminating real high at seventy nine there. So that there was some pretty bullish years, and then there was some pretty agony years, and then well, years again, and it, over the over the per, over the seventies, which is the last really sort of high inflationary period, the energy was the number one sector. So they weren't just modest moves; they were have a big move. So that's the thing I find interesting here is I think history said that you can get some pretty big moves in these energy stocks in high inflation environments. So um, yeah, you can can just get some. You know, it can be a lot bigger than and people expecting. Yeah, so just that's that's what I think. The most interesting here is that these these sort of stocks, which you know we have seen energy and precious metals be pretty buoyant here, and at the moment obviously gold is is you know, and silver are having pretty strong runs here. Um, the energy energy markets had a reasonable run there previously, but not not massive there. So it's probably underperforming a little bit there. If there's any guide there, it, it can have an old flash there as well. So. I definitely think this sort of energy area is one that we should be keeping it on an extra close eye on. It's got the potential to have another big We saw that, you know, you know Bannerman, Paladin, and, you know, um, 
expose energy. Some of those stocks had some pretty big moves on that last run. So it is, you know, even the coal stocks had some big runs as well here. So just think it's an area there just to keep an eye on there. Just because I know that in the 40s and 70s, we did see some big you know, moves. And we saw some big moves, big declines, and then big moves again. So that's, that's why I've sort of got to keep an eye on these sort of sector. Well, we definitely want to watch them because we know from the tables that you've dug up from the 70s, the amount of returns that they have can eclipse the rest of the market. We think yield did well. We think value did well. Nothing in comparison. So commodities, particularly energy, we definitely want to watch that in this high inflationary environment because the gene's not completely back in the bottle. Uh, another one that you've got in this week's report, though, is IFL Insignia. So <laughs> we've got a fair few that have taken the bath over the years. It's still a weekly chart that was some time ago. It seems to have sort of caught itself and sort of stabilised its fall. It's yeah, the old IOOF, actually, the IFL. So, um, yeah, but I guess it's probably interesting here just because it sort of has been building a bit of a base there. The the only negative there is that we did see a bit of selling off that last sort of um, high. Um, but, yeah, that's I have seen that before a few times. Um, and I still sort of recover there as well. I think I sort of, I think I avoided a couple of stocks when I saw that last leg I sort of come off and I and I kind of live to regret it. So, um, so it's not going to sort of persuade me that that's so negative. But I think what's more important is that it sort of holds this level here and then can build on that. But, yeah, potential sort of base there as well. So, um, yeah, looks pretty amazing now. I think, it, if I'm not mistaken, I think they might have made um, acquisition there as well. It might, might be a bit of a it's the right one there. But, uh, but uh, nonetheless, they did have yeah. a significant volume throughout that period. So, as you said, they got hit, um, came down with volume. However, while it was building the lower highs, so the one and the two, it seems to just the volume just dropped off as it was waning from this. Uh, after the first higher low, it yeah. seemed like volume was quite dry throughout that period. So, um, yeah, is that not right. really positive to see? Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, that's what you yeah that's what you generally sort of see the volume come up again. But obviously, we off, off that high there. I mean, look, maybe it got a little bit higher there. Three, we did see a bit of selling there the first week or two there. But it's you know yeah. So is is that the, the volume the second third week? Is that accumulation? coming in again near the lows and you know, that's a big question there but yeah it look it's not perfect there probably like to see it a little bit dry there but it has come off pretty quickly so um so i've seen this a couple of times in the past and it hasn't i thought it was a little negative but um it proved not to be the case so um but yeah what's probably more important is just sort of holding body was and i'm holding this level here yeah the thing about that zero one two three pattern for when they're overlapping like this and have yeah fairly sort of marginal near highs and stuff there, then your risk reward is pretty high and sort of thing. So if you're sort of if you're wrong, you know, then you you know, you basically sort of getting stopped down at the low, which is pretty tight. And and if you're right here about it, believe it can be yes, you know, some big moves do sort of follow the setup. So that's why I think it looks very you know, quite interesting here at the moment. Nice. Well that's very good in the zero one, two, three. And as you say, you're learning, you've looked at this, you've seen it in the past where there's sort of been a solid sell off coming into that third buy. Importance of understanding the history books. Next week we've got the model books that will come out and Gary spent a lot of time researching that. So we'll just share that with you next week. But before we do, we've got CXL in this week's report. Massive descending wedge. Well, I don't really need to highlight that one too much on screen do I because it's but, a big set wedge. Yeah. What happens there, Gary? What do we look for? Well, I was just sort of narrowing, just sort of tightening up on the um, looking sort of, you know, from, from 24 there. We sort of, we've had probably three touches of this. There's a smaller sort of wedge in there, which we've just sort of broken out of that smaller wedge. So, and there was a pretty big bar um, probably the last three or four weeks of actually the volume's been uh, a lot, um, you yeah, know, sort of stronger than normal. So, so possible sort of you know, change of character here, starting to break above a little, you know, previous little swing by. So this might be a possible change of character, pretty mean downtrend still. So you probably want to see a little bit more evidence there, but could be a possible change of character for this one. I, I probably would like to see it break out of that upper, um, that larger sort of descending wedge there first, but I've, I've seen some pretty decent sized moves come out of these uh, large descending wedges like this. So, um, but yeah, if 
there's definitely one to sort of keep an eye on there. I think it probably want to sort of see a few higher lows get set up there. I know we've been going in sort of out in this stock for a while, but it's been been a pretty nasty down downtrend for a while. So, um, yeah, so you know, that does come with some risks there. But you can see the volumes have been pretty elevated for a while, and so that's you know, that's possible signs of accumulation taking place down here. But um, but yeah, you just probably want to see it. You know, if you want to see it, probably break out of that upper wedge line there. And, and maybe have sort of, um, you know, just break another swing high as well. I think it'd be, it'd be nice to break above that 150 previous little high around there. Um, is that then you've sort of probably broken a couple of swing highs there, and that sort of give you a bit more confidence. Right. So that's what you're looking for a bit more confidence, more confirmation in the report or in the charts, I should say, whether that's consolidating under the high, making a high or low, coupled with volume, ideally. That's what you're looking for in a lot of these charts. So even though they're at the bottom half, you've been talking about trading in the top half. By the time they build that confirmation, it's possible they're in the top half or they've shown significant signs of support, recovery, accumulation. So uh, is that sort of grouping them all together, the ones that have taken a bath? That's why they're in this report because you can see if they build that, then they uh, history shows that can be the foundations of a good rally. Yeah, look, you know, do try and stay away from just sort of picking lows and stuff there. Um, you'd like to sort of see a bit more confirmation there. But I think just based on history there, we've seen some of those, you know, monies have pretty big moves, um, you know, when inflation's around. And we just sort of know that, I know most people think inflation is done here and buried, but history sort of suggests that, you know, central banks can get a little bit overzealous on the rate cutting and then um, we can get inflation come back there. And we have, that's happened most times. And and we've seen a lot of those commodities flash back pretty aggressively as well. So um, particularly the energy as well, that's the one that's, that, that, that must admit, that's the one that really sort of catches my eye. Having, having seen that have a big decline there, just, just looking back in history there, we've just seen some really big, um, you know, declines there. It's a bit like the momentum stock secrets. We see those big moves and they have, they have big corrections, but then, then they can go again as well. So um, we've just seen some big moves in the past there. Um, big corrections there when you know, when they thought inflation was done there, and all of a sudden you start cutting rate, and all of a sudden you start getting a little bit of inflation coming back, and I guess a bit scared, and that's when some of those um, those stocks can really move as well. So just I'm not saying that's going to happen. It look you know it may not happen there, but in the past that that's been the case in a, in a lot of the cases. So that's what I think is the most interesting. Then we're only watching watching that. I guess you know if inflation does sort of you know if central banks start cutting rates there, which I think already started to see it already but if they get a little bit zealous about cutting rates um you see a little bit of inflation come back um yeah it could you know that those commodities can swing back uh, pretty strongly there so it could be not just a trading opportunity maybe a bigger potential opportunity there well that's definitely what we're going to look for particularly for this so that ele- that elevated volatility come back here like we've seen in the 40s and 70s and you've seen in the energy markets to that point, we've been through the report that Gary shares with the clients on a Monday and this report goes out on Tuesdays. Thank you, uh, video goes out on Tuesdays. We say thank you, Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Thanks, Chris.